are so excited today. This is the big day in the world of movies. The Oscar nominations have been announced for the 91st uh, Academy Awards, and uh, they have no host, but that doesn't stop us from from talking about them, right, Conrado? Yeah, what's the matter? I'm from the Bronx. I'm winning the best picture, folding my pizza. <laughs> Sorry, I, Viga Mortensen is in my apartment <laughs> celebrating. Sorry about that. That's right. It's, it's very exciting. <laughs> it's contagious here. So, yes. So the Oscars have, have announced today. So we're giving you our very uh, sort of live re response recap uh, for this year. This has been a somewhat surprising <laughs> awards season would you say it's been a crazy award season so far yeah. and we're just getting well i think we're halfway through yeah and so yeah it's an interesting group of nom nominations there are definitely some surprises both good and bad um mm -hmm. so a lot of expected uh but yeah we're just gonna go through each of the categories and give our thoughts i've seen good hunk of the movies i there's still some of that i need to see uh like i haven't seen vice mm -hmm. so i've been kind of dreading it <laughs> um and i haven't seen a few of the others i haven't seen the wife can you ever forgive me uh the ballad of buster scruggs uh but i've seen a lot of them <laughs> uh, okay. so yeah uh, it will be this will be really interesting to see and i think i don't know it'll be interesting to see who ends up winning i i feel like mm -hmm. it's more open than maybe some other years where there's like a clear winner but in most of these categories but uh yeah we'll see yeah especially um in best picture i think so yeah. why don't we just get into it yes all right so we have in best picture we have eight uh no nine nominees is that right yeah three uh no i think it's eight Seven, eight eight that's right eight okay so first one pretty exciting uh for us mainstream comic book movie fans mm -hmm. we got black panther nominated black for best panther. picture yeah first superhero movie to get nominated for best picture that is that is quite an achievement do you think how do you feel about that I think it is, um, you know what? I am happy that it was Black Panther um, that got nominated because I do think that that movie has a lot of things going on that most of the Marvel movies, in my humble opinion, don't in, stem, in terms of themes and ideas and that sort of thing. The only thing that makes me a little um, sad about it is that the Black Panther gets nominated for Best Picture and Kevin Feige gets nominated for Producer, but Ryan Coogler, who directed and wrote the movie, didn't actually get a nomination this morning. So that's a little disappointing because I think he's a great director. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think that uh, it's, it's surprising because, uh, you know, Black Panther, uh, it, it has a, a lot of the same beats that you get in a typical M MCU film. Uh, but I think it's not just, I think it's not just like an identity kind of politics kind of thing. Uh, I think it actually has a, a better sort of script and character development than a typical superhero movie uh, that I think makes it special. And so I'm really happy that uh, it, it, you know, it got nominated. I, I think there might be people who think, oh, it's just because it has it's it's a diversity only nomination uh but i don't think that's true i think that it, it's it's a pretty good script and uh good characters so i i really enjoyed it so it also i think is good to point out that there's a number of movies black panther being the most notorious in this best picture lineup that made a lot of money at the box office so maybe uh, we don't need this uh, most popular film Oscar that oh, we were right. talking yeah. about. That's a good point. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because really, I mean, what would 
there's no more popular movie yeah <laughs> yeah exactly i'm just thinking what else could you i guess infinity war uh was right. really, like big popular movie that uh that didn't get nominated for anything i don't think um oh. i think it got something it, for visual effects or something think visual effects yeah well we'll get uh, there oh yeah you're right you're right you're right so all right well so there you go black panther i really liked the the whole it was just strong on almost every level like i guess people didn't like the visual effects at the end but mm -hmm. i don't know i didn't really care about that but yeah well it's it's interesting that it did get a lot of nominations but it didn't get visual effects so. yeah so that's good um okay so then we have black, black klansman uh, this is the yes. Spike Lee movie uh, okay. about uh, the uh, infiltration of the KKK. Um, yeah. And I really enjoyed the film, so I'm happy to see I, that it got nominated. I, I think it, it, it wasn't in my top 20, just barely. I think it was my 21st. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still really enjoyed it. Really, my top 30, I... I really, really liked. <laughs> I really went back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy. I think that it, it uh, was maybe a little heavy-handed in some of some of the uh, some of the messaging choices, but I know that worked for a lot of other people. Uh, but I thought it was it managed to be funny, and it managed to still be have tons of heart. And so I think that's what makes it work is that you know kind of balances that yeah it definitely worked for me it's one of my favorite movies of the year mm -hmm. and i'm really happy to see spike lee nominated for best picture and director because i think he's a very if nothing else he's a very important director in historical terms mm -hmm. and i think this is one of his better movies so i'm really happy to see him yeah. finally get a best director nomination Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i thought that uh adam driver was so good in it and so i was very happy to see that he got nominated we'll talk about that yeah. later on but i was actually wasn't expecting that uh i didn't know if if he would uh but uh because i feel like he's, he's his performance has been a little underrated um mm -hmm. of the year but i thought he was great and um so that's really cool and all right, so then we have Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> uh, come through, and uh, you know, I I've been thinking about this movie because when I saw it, I was literally like kind of uncomfortable in my chair, just like sitting there, like, ooh, what is the script? And you know, like I'm a big fan of TV movies, and to me, this felt like a a TV movie mixed in with better concert scenes than a TV movie could have. And yeah. if it was on VH1, I'd be like, Oh, that was pretty good. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> they did a good job. Um, but, uh, as a feature film, I was just kind of underwhelmed, uh, with the dialogue. That was my main problem with the movie is mm. I didn't think the dialogue was very good. I didn't feel like anybody really talks that way, especially like there's a scene uh where they're in the uh in this um uh in this producer's uh office and i don't know just the whole scene was just so cheesy that i i don't know i didn't i didn't like it and i thought that they like for instance well i mean this is a spoiler i guess kind of i don't know if you care but but anyway they the end of the movie they on the same day they have him uh, make up with his lost love or whatever. I don't know what you call it. He, he gets back together with this boyfriend guy that we barely seen earlier in the movie. He, uh, he makes up with his parents and they have this re, re, re reunification and he plays live aid in the same morning. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was it's a busy morning. Almost as yeah. busy as this morning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, I don't know, it was just too corny for my taste. Uh, but mm. what I tried to think about, I guess, is that my friend who is a seasoned film goer, not just some, you know, normal, normal film goer, she saw it 11 times. Oh my God. So, <laughs> so 
I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Like, it clearly connected with a lot of people. And uh, so. You know. Yeah, this is one I haven't seen. So maybe if your friend saw it 11 times, that means that I don't have to watch it. Is there a way <laughs> she can transfer one of those times to me? Yeah. yeah. I take sure. Venmo, so. Yeah, 11 times. I, I was, I, I don't know. Like, I, I do think a big part of it, because the concert scenes are great. They are really good. And I think that people just really like Queen a lot. I mean, I haven't seen the movie, but I, I have to assume that's the reason based yeah. on what people have told me about it. Yep. So I don't know. It's an interesting thing. I I will be kind of irritated if it wins, but whatever. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, so there we go. All right. Next, we have The Favorite and uh so this is our movie by uh gargos how do you say his last name yeah Gargos lantimos i think Lant- is how you say yeah. it and i did not i went into this with some degree of reticence because i did not like the lobster it wasn't for me mm-hmm. and I, I i didn't see his other movie and mm-hmm. i went into it nervous and then i actually really enjoyed it i do think that he he's his movies are kind of like top heavy (laughs) like i really am really enjoying them and then like i get i'm getting kind of all right i got it i got your point i got the jokes now i'm getting a little little tired of Mm -hmm. what you're doing um but still this was way in my opinion way better than the lobster i thought it was really funny for most of the movie um the performances are all great it looks great uh it yeah i enjoyed it yeah i mean i love the lobster but i do i did like the favorite as well i think it's a really good movie yeah yeah i just i just personally felt like the lobster just like okay i got it i got what you're trying to say (laughs) after like an hour and then i'm like oh well he's got a very uh particular um style yeah, and I think the favorite maybe he tones it down a little bit, even though it's still there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it that's why people. I think. Yeah, I think that's why it got best picture, and it's been, you know, the more most successful of his movies commercially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and it, it's it's just funny. It has a lot of good. It's very funny. A lot of good jokes. So, uh, I think. Uh, I don't know. I think a lot of people, I mean, it definitely is an R-rated film, so it won't be for everybody. But I think a lot of people, you don't have to be a super artsy person to appreciate the favorite, I don't think. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So let's talk about Green Book. <laughs> oh, your, your favorite Green movie. Gabagoo. <laughs> My favorite movie. I am, uh, I am really upset. Okay, I don't want to get too much into Green Book because I could go off on and right. on and on. Uh-huh. I'm just going to say uh, it would be really heartbreaking to me in the year that Spike Lee finally gets nominated for Best Director and Black Klansman is up for Best Picture for him, for his movie to lose again to what is essentially a remake of Driving Miss Stacy, which is the movie that won the day, the year that Do the Right Thing was nom- wasn't nominated, actually. Right. Only the screen for nom- so that, I think, would be really sad. Um, I have a lot of issues with Green Book. Um, I think, you know, like thematically and politically is a movie that I disagree with a lot. Um, and in terms of quality, I don't think it's very good. So it's it's probably my least favorite of the nominees for Best Picture, with the caveat that I haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I enjoyed the film. I felt like it was a. I don't know. I felt like it was a beautiful depiction of a friendship uh that two people that i didn't think they had anything in common but turn out to uh to find those things that they have in common and have this this friendship and i i i don't know i was moved by it i liked it uh but i get it i'm not uh the i'm not african-american 
I'm not gay. I, you know, so I don't have those same, um, uh, sensitivities. Uh, my life experience, uh, is different. And so I can appreciate the problems that other people have with it. I don't know. I feel like that people, I don't know if I even want to say this, but I don't know. I feel like people are kind of wanting it to be more of a protest film, whereas it's just a simple, fr- it's just a simple movie about friendship. It's not, yeah. it's not trying to, uh, trying to have a, a really strong message. And I think people want it to have a really strong message. Uh, but I don't know. Um, well, I will say this just to put a button on this, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think what's going on is that what people are seeing in this movie is that it's using these sort of uh, templates or I don't know, I don't want to say cliches, but kind of like these archetypes that we've seen a lot of times in movies about the friendships and unlikely friendships. And, you know, it's a whole genre that we've seen before. And -hmm. it's using it to discuss these very fraught themes that um, have evolved in the way we talk about them and the nuances of those things, we understand much more than we did back, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And the only thing that I want to say about Green Book and people who liked Green Book is that I, my wish is that people who like the movie, when they hear someone who is uh, talking about the things that they don't like about it or that they found, let's say, problematic, that they don't think that it's an attack on them for liking the movie, but rather so that they can see what these people are saying, because I think there is a lot to talk about and to realize about the way we make these movies and what is truthful and not truthful about the way they deal with these issues. That's Mm -hmm. what I will say. I think that's very fair. I agree with you. I, you know, it should hopefully be a point. It's not, nobody's attacking anybody. We're just having a conversation, hopefully. And uh, I, I, I completely agree with you there. So yeah, it will be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I, you know, it made me want to be a better friend and a better person. So I, I enjoyed it, but, and it is kind of a Christmas movie, which I'm a fan of. so anyway, all right. Then we have Roma and this is a beautiful movie. You know, this is an interesting one because it's the first Netflix movie to get uh, nominated mm-hmm. obviously had a, a release a certain degree of a release but that's pretty big uh big step yeah. for the academy very, very unlikely in a lot of ways the first netflix movie and it's a foreign movie and it's in black and white and it got the most nominations this morning alongside oh, with oh. the favorite they both got 10 nominations which is mm-hmm. very um you know unlikely but um i'm happy about it because i love roma yeah it was really really good i i thought there uh, were particular scenes that were just some of the most devastating of the whole year Mm -hmm. yeah and also some beautiful scenes i think Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah i think um roma did so well this morning that i'm starting to think it might become the first foreign film to win best picture that's kind of what i'm hoping for um because there's a lot of other likely winners that i'm not so crazy about so that's where i'm putting um, my hopes yeah i i would be thrilled i I mean i think it's definitely the most beautiful uh of any of these nominees in my opinion Mm -hmm. yeah i would agree with that and also one more piece of trivia one of the nominees for roma is producer gabriela rodriguez who is the first uh, latin latina woman to get nominated for producing of his picture so that's Hmm. cool that is cool. Uh, I I just thought it was so moving, particularly with uh, her, it's, it's Cleo, right? Is her name? Yeah, Cleo. Yeah, Cleo. Cleo, and particularly her, her, the story arc with her pregnancy that was just mm-hmm. yeah, of course, devastating. Oh, it was it was really good. And uh, I, you know, a lot of people uh, you you tell them those things as far as you tell them that it's foreign film and you tell them it's black and white and you tell them it's right. and uh and that might be like oh i don't know but i think if they give it a shot i i think they would really i don't know i think they would really like it yeah i think it's worth giving a shot because there is enough there in terms of i think um 
a craftsmanship and emotion and a spectacle that, you know, I think people could get uh, into it, even people who don't usually watch that sort of film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, next we have A Star is Born. You get the nomination. And I really enjoyed this movie. I thought that uh, it, it was did i thought that it was executed so well the thing the, the things that i liked about it is i thought the chemistry was so great between mm-hmm. lady gaga and radley cooper and that is the key i think to making this kind of movie work because obviously we know exactly what's going to happen we've seen this story many times not only in stars born movies but in many mm-hmm. other movies we've seen that so we know the plot so it what really matters is this great chemistry and great songs. I thought mm-hmm. all of the singing was so good. <laughs> and, the songs are really good. Yeah. I came out of it thinking that was the best singing uh, since Dreamgirls in a movie. I, I really <laughs> felt that way. That um, I mean, I don't yeah, know. I love the singing. I will take it. I think, yeah, I think it's, I think the performances are really good in terms of the singing. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I'm not the biggest fan of Star is Born. I think the first half works much better for me than the second. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the second half focuses a little bit too much on the Bradley Cooper character and kind of leaves the Lady Gaga to the side, which is something I'm not... I think it's a weakness, but um, I'm okay with it being nominated. It was a big hit. It uh, meant something to the culture. Mm -hmm. It's another... uh, example of why we don't need a popular film Oscar. I think this movie is very popular. Um, I The thing that's surprising to me is that uh, I went into this award season thinking A Star is Born was going to dominate and hasn't really won anything major so far. Um, You know, the Golden Globes, it only won Best Song and um, Bradley Cooper today, um, we're going to talk about this later, but he didn't get a Best Director nomination, even, which also surprised mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It is surprising, especially because, I mean, I guess this is music, but uh, uh, Hollywood and the Academy love uh, the uh, stories about becoming famous and becoming, yeah. you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Like, <laughs> Yeah, because they've awarded movies like Birdman and The Artist in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, maybe Bohemian Rhapsody is kind of, because they're, as far as themes and, and ideas, they're kind of similar. Well, Movie. Yeah, just the fact that they're, yeah, about rock stars. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think Bohemian Rhapsody might be sadly stealing some of its thunder. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I, and I just think that key was the chemistry. I, I thought they were just mm-hmm. so good together. Yeah, so. the chemistry, especially in the first half, I think it's, yeah, yeah. there's really something there. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Uh, last one is Vice. I have not seen this one. I I don't know. I just... I just couldn't. I I just didn't want to see it. <laughs> Vice, more like why did I sit through this movie? <laughs> I just I don't know. I've got enough politics in my life. I just didn't feel like seeing um, it. And well, I don't know. Yeah, the the saddest thing to me is that it's not even very uh, smart or doesn't have that you know illuminating a thing to say about dick cheney and this whole bush administration and his life it's just a very sort of wikipedia version of what happened and you know with a couple of jokes thrown in it's it's very disappointing and it ends with a sort of post-credit scene that is really i think uh indicative of the kind of you know it's a very smug movie i think Mm -hmm. and that's what it looked kind of smug what do you think of of um uh the the uh oh my gosh my brain the big short oh um i like the big short a little bit better than this um i'm not crazy about it i think it has um i don't know there's something about the the vibe of the big short that i that i'm not super into but i think that movie made more sense because i think the financial crisis and what happened there is really hard to understand for a person who doesn't know that much about economics and it's you know, a, a subject that is purposely complicated. So the way that he explored it there made more sense than this story about Dick Cheney. Like, you know, people, I mean, I don't want to get too much into politics, but people understand 
the things that were problematic or bad or frustrating about Dick Cheney already. You know what I mean? I don't know that. Yeah, you need just to be reminded of that. I, I yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I I really actually enjoyed the Big Short. I I thought that it uh, did did a really good job of of explaining these complicated things in a uh, entertaining way. Uh, so that <laughs> you you could kind of I kind of wished that it had been PG thirteen just because I feel like it's the kind of thing that would be very helpful to show to teenagers uh, to you know in schools and stuff talk about talk about these things and uh, but but because I don't feel like any of the R rated content really helped it any I don't think it was necessary and uh, so I don't know but anyway I. I I thought it was pretty creative and uh, talked about a complicated uh, situation in an entertaining way. Um, and I thought that it was strange that Christian Bale got nominated that year because, in my opinion, Steve Carell was the emotional heart of the movie. And uh, so I would have nominated him in his role over Christian Bale. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, but I enjoyed it. Uh, but I don't know. I just, I just didn't feel, I'm like, I'm going to give myself a pass on this one, but I guess now that it's been nominated, I better finally just see it. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's dive, let's dive into lead actor. So yeah, we right. have, uh, Christian Bale for Vice, uh, Bradley Cooper, Stars Born, William Defoe at Eternity's Gate. Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody and Viggo Mortensen for Green Book. I don't really understand how Mahershala Ali is supporting. Support, yeah, Viggo is his best actor. I don't get it. Uh, yeah, I'm exactly way ahead of the same amount of screen time. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that it's just broken about this system. I think actually we have uh, multiple performances that I would consider lead nominated in the supporting category this year. Um, and it happens every year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I am thinking about this category that maybe the fact that Bradley Cooper didn't get a best director nomination will help him in this category. Maybe people will feel like this is the one place where they can reward him now and oh. maybe he'll pull up, ahead and get the oscar because he has sure. been nominated several times before right he's nominated a, yeah i yeah, think three or four times. times yeah and, you know so um of course right now christian bale and rami malik have been winning most awards so we'll see what happens yeah i mean christian bale it's again i haven't seen the movie uh but it does seem like this year's darkest really hour great, really great makeup so you <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah Mm -hmm. And and Rami Malek has a little bit of that too, because it's the sort of thing of like, oh, you look so much like Freddie Mercury, and you yeah. dance like him, or I don't know. That's yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing that Christian. I mean, Christian Bell's transformation is pretty incredible. Uh, is as far as the, and he he does not look like Christian Bale. I it it's pretty crazy. Uh, but um, right. yeah. But and, that's why you have a best of makeup category. Right. <laughs> exactly uh i don't know i i i haven't seen it at eternity's gate for some reason at my local art house they said that it was way longer than it is and i was like oh wow because they they were saying, uh, like almost three hours long and i'm like whoa right. that's really long but it's actually not so they were wrong uh because yeah. it's just it's under two hours so i need i should check it out i guess i like this yeah. a lot so yeah, I haven't seen that one either. And I do like Willem Dafoe, so I should catch up with that. Yeah. So, all right. Well, lead actress, we have Yalitza Arpaccio, Roma, Glenn Close, The Wife, Olivia Coleman, The Favorite, Lady Gaga, Stars Born, uh, Melissa McCarthy, Can You Ever Forgive Me? Pretty good list. Yes, I would agree. I am very happy for Yalitza Aparicio uh, yeah. getting nominated because she uh came a little bit unexpected and i think she deserves it i think she did a great job yeah oh she was amazing she totally yeah. deserves it uh i haven't seen the wife i heard good Me things either. and but i do like glenn close and it seems like it's gonna be her win this year finally after mm -hmm. many nominations and having never won so yeah yeah that would be good 
And I could see Olivia Coleman though winning uh, the mm-hmm. if they decide to kind of. Yeah, I think I think if not for Glenn Close, the only the, I think Olivia Coleman is her biggest competition. If people are really into the favorite and they feel like mm-hmm. they have to reward it in one of the big categories, this could be it. Yeah, and you know Melissa McCarthy, two-time Oscar nominee. Who'd have thought, right? Yeah, good for her, and in a, <laughs> in a very good performance, I think. Yeah, uh, I haven't yeah. seen it, but I heard good things. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, and Lady Gaga nominated for Best Actress. Way to go. Way yeah. To go. <laughs> I I really enjoyed her performance. So I, I do. think she deserves it. So She's my favorite performance in the Star yeah. Sport. So I'm yeah. happy about that. Yeah. So supporting actor, we have uh, Marcel Ali for Green Book, Adam Driver, Black Klansman, Sam Elliott, Stars Born. Yay. Um, Richard E. Grant, Can You Ever Forgive Me? And Sam Rockwell for Vice. So uh-huh. I, it's a pretty pretty strong uh, list. I mean, I haven't seen Vice or Can You Ever Forgive Me, but mm-hmm. those are good actors. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, I did like Marissa Lee in Green Book. I thought he was good. I But I'm so happy to see Sam, uh, Sam Elliott for Star Wars Born because I think yes. it was exactly what you want in a true supporting performance. He did such a good job in elevating that movie. I think every scene he was in, he made better. And he's mm-hmm. just so great. I love Sam Elliott. Who doesn't? Sam yeah. Elliott is, in, in yes, one yeah. of the best people. I am so happy that he finally has a Oscar nomination under yeah. his belt. Um, yeah. Very well deserved, I think. Agreed. Yeah, he is just, yeah, he's awesome. And uh, so I made me really happy. And, I, and I'm really happy about Adam Driver. I think that he, his performance was very good. So. Um, yeah, good performance. Uh, maybe not my favorite Adam Driver performance, but he's given so many that were yeah. so good, and he finally gets the Oscar nomination. You know, I think yeah. it's deserved. He's so great. I mean, he manages to be so funny. I love him in his humorous roles, uh, whether it's uh, you know on Saturday Night Live or like uh, you know when he's when he hosts Saturday Night Live, it was hilarious. Uh, but also. Uh, I loved Logan Lucky. I thought that was so funny. And then he, he can do the big mainstream stuff, obviously, with the Star Wars. And then do a movie like this, uh, where he plays this interesting character. He's mm-hmm. the best. So, yay. Great. And Marcel Lee's a great actor. I don't think, he, I, I don't think that he's going to win, because he just won. I'd be surprised. That's the, only thing. That's the thing. I it would be weird if he. It doesn't happen that often. The biggest yeah. comparison is Christoph Waltz when he won a second time for Django and Chain. Yeah. And that was weird because that year none of all of the nominees had won before, and it was a very strange year for this category. So now that he's nominated against you know Sam Elliott and Richard E. Grant, who have are veterans who've never won before, uh-huh. I. I'm thinking that one of them might end up getting it. But then again, this might be the one place where Green Book can win, and they do like Green Book, Green Book so I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, so, yeah, supporting actress, we have Amy Adams for Vice, Marina de Tavira for Roma, Regina King if Bill Street can talk, Emma Stone for The Favorite, and Rachel Vice for The Favorite. And I guess this is the only one that I'd say is a pretty, pretty predictable or one of the most predictable. I mean, oh. I think Regina King is going to win. Oh, you think so? Yeah, don't you don't think so? In terms of that, well, I wanted to say, first of all, that I think this Marina de Tavir nomination um, is, votes really well for Roma. I think this shows mm. that the movie has a lot of strength because that was not expected. And I think she does a really good job in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Regina King, I would say, probably wins, but uh, it's going to be a harder... Uh, run for her than than I was anticipating before because she's not nominated for the SAG award or the BAFTA so you know I feel like if the same person wins both of those then they might get the momentum Um, if they go to different people then maybe Regina will manage to pull it off at the end I do love Regina King so I hope she wins yeah she's great and uh, she's the best thing about the movie in in my opinion Uh, so I, I would be fine with that uh, even though I didn't care for the movie. Um, yeah, I mean, if you figure the favorite girls will probably cancel the, each other out. And uh, yeah, and so, and I don't see, that would be another Amy Adams. <laughs> I think is what she's been nominated six times. Yeah. Uh, well, one day Amy Adams will have her. Uh, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. 
or Amy Adams. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh, I was surprised about uh, the Roman nomination. You're probably right. I hadn't thought of that, but, but yeah. Um, so we'll see, I guess, what ends up happening. Uh, director, we have Spike Lee, Black Klansman, Powell, Powellkowski, Cold War, Yorgos Lanthimos, The Favorite, Alfonso Crone for Roma, Adam McKay for Vice. The big surprise here, at least for me, was the Cold War nomination. Yeah, and the fact that Bradley Cooper didn't get in. Yeah. Um, it is notable. It's the I think it's the second time ever that two foreign directors have been nominated for foreign movies in this category. You know, obviously, <laughs> yeah. Yorgos Lantimos is Greek, but his movie is in English. And this time right. we have two foreign language movies, uh, Cold War and Roma. And also two foreign language movies in black and white, which is even more oh, yeah. strange. So, Have you know, seen it's, it's uh, Cold War? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Cold War. It's a very well-made movie, but I think it doesn't quite stick the landing for me. Mm. I haven't I haven't gotten to see it just barely open here at the art house. Um, yeah, but it's worth seeing if you can find it somehow. I think uh, it's worth a watch. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I, I guess Alfonso Cuarón is. Would you say is the favorite? I would say so, unless yeah. there's some sort of Black Klansman resurgence, uh, and it ends up winning Best Picture and doing really well. I think Roma and Alfonso Cuarón has this in the bag. And I think he deserves it. You did a great job. So. Oh, I think yeah. so too. I yeah. think it's uh, probably his the best of his movies, and he's made some really great ones. Yeah. So animated feature, my favorite. Uh, we yeah. have Incredibles two, uh, Brad Bird, Isle of Dogs, Wes Anderson, Mariah, Yay, uh, Momo Rosada, Ralph breaks the internet, uh, Richmore, Phil Johnson, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, and this Bob Perschietti, Peter Ramsey, Rodney Rothman. Uh, this was very exciting for me because this is the first non-Studio Ghibli anime film to get nominated. I was so afraid. Whoa, that, is that, that so? Yes. And I was so afraid that something like The Grinch would, you know, or some mm -hmm. something like that would sneak in instead of, because the Academy just has this history of not supporting anime that's not Studio Ghibli. And uh so i'm thrilled you know because i was wow. very upset when your name didn't get nominated because i think it totally Correct. deserved it and uh and last year silent voice was so great uh and this just makes me really happy because i think mariah is a great movie and uh you know mamora hosada is a great director <clears throat> mm -hmm. and i'm just happy that he got some he got nominated i don't think he's gonna win but that just made me happy so right yeah. yeah, I think unlikely to win, but very. I didn't know that the no uh, Studio Ghibli anime had ever been nominated, so that's a really great thing. Yeah. I'm very happy for uh, Mamoru Hosada, and yeah. I haven't seen Mirai yet, but I I really want to. Yeah, I think you'll really. I think you'll like it because I, I. It does well. I mean, I guess actually, it does have some time travel, so I guess a little sci-fi, but not much. <laughs> it's more like. It's more like a sort of Christmas carolish kind of thing where like the, oh like a ghost of christmas past. yeah like different sort of spirits i guess you'd say or different things come and help the little boy uh, all right i like spirits yeah <laughs> it's really creative and really fun so, so uh but yeah it's a great list i'm really thrilled with it i think they they did a great job it's a it's a pretty good list given what was out there i think um do we think spider-man's gonna get it i do i i i just feel like there's Everybody, almost everyone who saw it loved that movie. And uh, it's won everything up until now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they have given animated superhero movie. They get, you know, Big Hero 6 won. Uh, so they're not opposed to that. Yeah. So I, I would be, you know, I could see Incredibles 2 taking it. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I don't know. I'm really hopeful because of just what's happened so far. Yeah, me too. I think uh, I think on paper, Spider Man had a lot of things against it, but now that it's nominated, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about its chances of winning. So um, yeah. we'll see. I would yeah. be happy if it did. Yeah, story is uh, animated shorts. So we have oh. uh, we have animal behavior, uh, yeah. bow, uh, late afternoon, one small step, and weekends. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think we both have actually seen all of the nominees, right? Yes. And yeah. the only one I, I didn't really like animal behavior. That was the only one of these that I didn't really personally care for. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. I saw all of the 10 uh, finalists that they had. They released a list of 10 finalists, right? Yeah. Before. And I saw all of them and animal behavior was actually my least favorite of the 10. So I'm surprised that it got nominated, except that the directors are um, very well known and they have been nominated before in this category. And I think they have even won. Um, so I think there's some of that name recognition that might have helped the movie. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I thought that they were all um, all all good. I am trying to remember. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was the only one that I I just I wasn't a big fan of. Yeah. It's a pretty good list. Um, my favorite of the of the ones that I saw didn't make the cut, sadly, which was um, Lost and Found, which was about these like little puppets. Um, I don't know if you oh, remember yeah, that, that one. That one was so good. It was really good. And I think it was very beautifully animated. It was this stop motion animation. And then, but you know, some of these are really good. Um, Late Afternoon, I think is very touching. Um, one, mo- one Small Step is really good as well. Weekends is... Um, it's very in, well animated, interesting. So um, I don't know. Do we think that Bao's going to get it since it's the most high profile one? No, I don't think so. I mean, typically Pixar actually doesn't win the best short. Uh, like um, Piper was a um, uh, a an anomaly. Uh, usually they don't. And I thought that I think that short was actually kind of divisive. A lot of people didn't like it, mm. uh, and. Uh, they just felt it was kind of strange i i liked it but a lot of people didn't like it i so i don't i don't think that will win i think the other thing is i think um not to be reductive but um one small step has similar themes to bow i think they're both about like a child and their parent and they're both have like this sort of asian american uh, theme to them Uh, i don't know if that's gonna you know split the vote between the two of them Mm. Um, maybe I, I i have to be honest they all are kind of meshing together for me i can't <laughs> remember what which do you remember? so one small step is the the girl who wants to be an astronaut oh that was really cute i liked that and w- what was late afternoon do you remember late afternoon is the um the yes it's the the woman who sort of like has her daughter and her memories she has like alzheimer's or something oh, like oh yeah that was good too that I think is probably my favorite of this bunch. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Oh, do you remember Weekends? Which one was that? I can't remember. Uh, weekends is this is kind of like a hand-drawn one with this little kid who has, his parents have divorced and he spends some time, you know, he spends the weekends oh, with his dad. Man. Yeah. That was good too. Yeah. So, yeah, I, but I, I would be surprised if Bao actually won. Uh, so I, right. I, I we'll think, see. yeah, I, that'd be good if uh, one small step. Or late afternoon. Anyway, all right. Adapted screenplay. We have The Ballad of Busker Scruggs, Black Klansman, Can You Ever Forgive Me, If Beale Street Could Talk, and A Star is Born. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I haven't seen two of these. um, Mm -hmm. uh, But do you feel like this is the one spot where they will will award Black Klansman? I, I do think so, especially now that if Beale Street Could Talk didn't get Best Picture, I think, um, well, I don't know, maybe that might end up helping it, but I do think that Spike Lee has to get something, you know, he's such a beloved and res- well-respected director, and this seems like the place where mm-hmm. they could reward that movie that they clearly really like. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, that's where, I think I would be surprised if that doesn't happen. I, I mean, in my opinion, the script was the major problem with if Bill Street could talk, so I wouldn't nominate it, but that's just me. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I, I would be, I think that's what will happen. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, so um, what surprised me, though, is original screenplay, uh, mm-hmm. they have nominated Green Book. Isn't that based on a book? Isn't that based no, on a memoir? It's, it's not, actually. It's just the, the son of the guy in the movie, the Viggo Mortensen's character, um, he just, you know, he based it on his dad's recount of what happened. But um, 
Uh, it's not really based on a book. Yeah. I thought for sure when it came out, I mean, like when you, that it said based on, there was some book, but anyway, oh. I was, that surprised me. I guess I hadn't been paying attention too much in the awards, uh, which category it was, but, but yeah, you have an original screenplay, you have the favorite first reformed, which we didn't talk about that. Ethan Hawke got, yeah, that was sad. I think Ethan Hawke gave it an amazing performance. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then uh, Green Book, Roma, and Vice, uh, original screenplay. Yeah. So I haven't seen, I actually haven't seen First Reformed. I, I need to. Yeah, really great movie, First Reformed. I was surprised and a little, well, I wasn't super surprised because there were six movies and only five slots competing, but eighth grade didn't get into original oh, screenplay. And that would have been great. I think it's a very well written movie. I agree. Yeah. Mm. Too bad. Uh, yeah, I think the favorite will win this. Do you agree? I don't know, because I think it could. Um, there's been some controversy around the Green Book uh, screenwriter and director, so maybe Green Book won't get it. I think Roma could win, um, although it's not the most writerly movie in the nominees. The favorite, the only thing about the favorite is that it wasn't written by the director, and I think sometimes there is a little resistance to that, like a little snobbishness to like. Oh, interesting. I don't know. I just feel like it's I probably not going to win best picture. And I feel like a lot of times the screenplay ones go to sort of second place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That <laughs> makes sense to me. It makes sense. So Black would... Klansman would, would get this. And then, then, and then a favorite. Favorite get, yeah. Well, it could also be Vice because, you know, it got a lot of nominations and uh, Adam McKay has, well, although he's won before in this, in an epic screenplay. screenplay. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, cinematography. We have Cold War, The Favorite, Never Look Away, which I've never even heard of. What is that? Yeah, that was the most surprising nomination to me. Um, totally came out of nowhere. It's a foreign movie from Germany. It got nominated in foreign film. And it also got this random cinematography nomination. Yeah, look at that. Uh, Roma and A Star is Born. I mean, I didn't really think The Star is Born, the cinematography. Oddly enough, I would... I would think that actually Bohemian Rhapsody, the cinematography was actually really cool. If you were going to get like the way they did the crowd, the concert scenes and stuff was actually really good. Um, but I don't know. I didn't think the stars were in the cinematography was that good. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was fine. Um, was I think cool. this is clearly Roma is going to win this one in a cake yeah, book. So. Yeah, you're right. 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 Um, all right. Uh, best documentary. This was a big surprise to me. We have, oh, yeah. uh, we have free solo. Hale mm-hmm. County this morning, this evening, whatever that is. Uh, Minding the Gap of Fathers and Sons and RBG. No, won't you be my neighbor? That seemed like a shoe in. The documentary category is very shady. Um, and there's almost always, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that was a big surprise to me. It was to me too. I, yeah. Although. I have to say, I'm just so happy that Mind in the Gap got nominated because I love that movie. And I thought it was going to be hard for it to get in. So I think, in you know, 10 years ago, a movie like that would have never gotten into documentary. So I'm really happy that it did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy about that as well. I loved Mind in the Gap. And but of I- course... Yeah, of course, Won't You Be My Neighbor is one of your favorites. And I I think people assumed that it was going to come in and win the award at the end. So that's really shocking. Yeah, I mean, both Minding the Gap and Won't You Be My Neighbor made my top 20 of the year. I loved both of them. Uh, But uh, I I don't know. I just thought for what it was trying to do, I think Won't You Be My Neighbor was so well executed. And it's very surprising too because typically the Academy loves talking head kind of type of documentaries like mm-hmm. that's the kind of thing they like they typically don't give like the errol morris the real creative documentary that kind of thing they don't give them awards and uh so it's it's surprising on that account as well mm-hmm. although i think they've they've been con- consciously trying to change that a little bit more and the documentary branch is trying to go into more mm-hmm. different kinds of documentaries it's the mm-hmm. feeling that i get if you look mm-hmm. at these nominees you know mind the gap Hill County this morning, this evening is a very experimental sort of observational documentary mm-hmm. that is also the kind of movie that wouldn't have gotten nominated in the past. Um, so yeah, so I think they're making an effort to nominate different kinds of documentaries. Yeah, interesting. I I hadn't even heard of A Father and Sons in Hill County. I hadn't even heard of those, so mm-hmm. I'll have to check them out. But I, re- I really liked 
Oh, when you be my neighbor. I saw it three times. Um, okay, we're gonna skip over some short categories. Uh, so we have foreign language film. We have Capernaum, Cold uh-huh. War, Never Look Away, Roma, and Shoplifters. Uh, so I I haven't seen Capernaum, Cold War, Never Look Away, but I'm thrilled yeah. to see Shoplifters. I loved that movie, and Roma, of course, is really great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yay. Um, yeah, I'm very, very happy for Shoplifters as well. Um, Hirokazu Koreeda, of course, is a favorite of ours, yes. and I'm happy that he is gotten nominated. Yeah, he is amazing. And uh yeah, I mean I think Rome is gonna win for sure this, but um but Probably. I do love shufflers. So all right, film editing, we have Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, Green Book, The Favorite, and Vice. And mm-hmm. uh I don't know. I I think I wouldn't be surprised if Black if if Bohemian Rhapsody actually wins this one. Uh it is pretty well edited, especially the concert scenes are very well done. I I have to say this is probably my least favorite category of uh, this morning. It's I think it's a bit of a mess. Like I don't, I don't, I don't really understand what the criteria was here. Yeah. <laughs> um, my the nominee that I would vote for is Black Klansman, not just because it's my favorite, but I think it does a very incredible use of cross cutting between scenes in a very deliberate way. That I think it's very impressive. Um, uh-huh. I think as far as who's going to win, I might also agree with maybe it's Bohemian Rhapsody, not just because of what you said, but um, also because it has this whole history of like, you know, being a fire and Brian singer. And then the the editors had to take over and like rescue the movie and whatever, you know? So I think that's something that might be helping it. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't the My favorite editing of the whole year, of course, it's not going to get nominated, but I think that Isle of Dogs had really great editing. Yeah, That's well, animated movies. I don't. Uh, it's. I think it will be really hard for an animated movie to get into editing. Yeah. Um, That's just one of those biases. I'm just saying that's that's what I I would have picked. But and yeah. I I think the uh, Spider Man also had great editing. But mm-hmm. anyway, uh, so sound editing. Uh, we have Black Panther, Bohemian Rhapsody, First Man, Quiet Place, and Roma. And I forget which one of these typically goes sound mixing, sound editing. Like, is it the sound editing that typically goes to war type movies? Uh, yeah, sound editing yeah. is what used to be called sound effects editing. So the movie with the most action and explosions is usually the one that tends to win. Do you think um, Black Panther? Do you think might win? I actually don't know. Maybe it'll be First Man. Maybe it'll be Black Panther. Oh yeah. Um, but first man is probably well roma has really good sound too but um, yeah. first man has all those raggedy sounds in the spaceships you know lots of effects uh-huh. um a quiet place obviously is all around sound so yeah that's actually, true. yeah it's an interesting one i have uh, a question though um for you since you have seen bohemian rhapsody uh-huh. so musicals tend to do really well in sound mixing but they rarely get nominated in sound editing uh, so I was wondering if there's something in Bohemian Rhapsody that it's very sound effects heavy because, you know, mm-hmm. the last musical that I got nominated was La La Land and I think it was because of the tap dancing, which is, oh. you know, sound effects and Foley. But I don't know why. It sounds, it's just seems strange to me that Bohemian gets in, but Star is Born didn't, you know? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, but the way they do the concert scenes, um you know they had to create i think probably some of the crowd sounds and some of the Mm. things the concert scenes are really impressive (laughs) they're really good uh and uh so that uh, that must be where it's coming from it has to be the crowds right or maybe it's just the boom boom clap of we will rock you (laughs) got it (laughs) they didn't even do right (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, uh but anyway uh so yeah sound mixing black panther bohemian rhapsody first man roma stars born and uh do you think this might be where they throw stars born bones um, I think there's another category coming up that is the most likely, but I could see Star is Born winning here. I could also yeah. see Bohemian Rhapsody winning here. I think musicals tend to do really well, although notoriously La La Land didn't get it in this category, so I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Okay, production design. We have Black Panther, First Man, The Favorite, 
Mary Poppins Returns, yay, uh, and Roma. <laughs> uh, really good, solid list. Uh, all these had good production design. In my opinion. I agree. I think it's a very solid lineup. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think, I don't know who will win this Me either. one. This is one of the hard, harder ones, I think, to, to predict um, this year. Um, I would be really happy if Roma won because I think it's very impressive what they did in the movie recreating uh, Mexico City in the 70s. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was really good. So I'm happy. All of these had good production designs. So I'd be happy with any of them winning. So we'll see. Uh, okay, original score. We have Black Klansman, uh, Black Panther, If Beale Street Could Talk, Isle of Dogs, yay, and Mary Poppins Returns. So it's a pretty good list. I'm happy. I agree. Um, I'm a little sad that First Man didn't get in because I think the score is really good and it was predicted in most places. But, you know, Justin Hurwitz, who wrote the score, has won before. So I think it's okay to give it to someone else. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy that Terrence Blanchard, who's been doing the scores for Spike Lee's movies for decades now, has finally gotten nominated. Uh-huh. And I do really like the Black Klansman score. I know that it's a little divisive among some people, but I really like it. I liked it just fine. I'd, it wasn't particularly memorable for me as far as the score, but but I, I didn't dislike it. So I'm I'm fine with it. And uh, yeah, I really like the Black Panther score. That was really yeah, good. Yeah, that's a really good score. And I love Dogs. Doctors. I think it's also very good. And yeah. I think, I mean, I love the If Bill Street Could Talk score. Yeah. I, um, I don't think I dislike the movie quite as much as you. I think I like it much more, but mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest fan. I do love the score. I think it's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah uh so uh, yeah and i can see why other people like it it just wasn't for me um Mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah the score was beautiful uh all right and i'm happy to see mary poppins insurance get a nomination there i didn't think it would so that makes me happy uh but uh original song we have all the stars from black panther all fight from rbg place where the lost things go from mary poppins returns uh shallow from star is born and uh when a cowboy trades his spurs for wings from ballad of buster scruggs yeah (laughs) that was an unexpected uh, nomination and a fun one i think it's going to be really uh, fun when they perform if they perform that song at the ceremony um because it's a very comedic moment and Uh it's actually uh it's going to be nice for the for the ceremony yeah Uh, speaking of we which i think it's strange that the oscars didn't want lin-manuel miranda to perform i guess when they nominated place where lost things go from mary poppins and yeah, not that's a good point triple the light fantastic but you know what are you gonna do i still think that the best song from mary poppins returns is the one at the end which yeah. didn't even get submitted i don't think yeah i mean i love all the songs so uh so well i was happy to see that and yeah i like uh the rbg song is good i like the black panther song is good i mean i would have mm-hmm. loved i would have gotten rid of this cowboy one and done um place called slaughter race I, that would have also been a really fun performance I'd yeah say. that would have been really good and uh but and i'm a little surprised maybe because alan macon you know t- t- is yeah such a, but anyway. yeah um well i guess we both think shallow is gonna get it this is probably the most yeah. likely a star yeah. is born win yeah that's and true. very well deserved yeah. too yeah, I think so. I love that song. It's so good. And such an integral part of the movie. If you really mm-hmm. want, I mean, if, if this category has any validity as far mm-hmm. as part of the movie, like that song is so important to the movie. Yeah. Success. Anyway, so Makeup and Hair, we have Border, Mary Queen of Scots, and Vice. What is mm-hmm. Border? I haven't even heard of so that. So Border is this Swedish movie that I actually heard a lot about. It it got really great reviews at uh, the Cannes Film Festival this year. And I've been meaning to see it. Um, and now it's nominated. And I say I'm happy for them. And then likely nominee, but it probably deserved. Um, and I'm curious to see, to catch up with it. Yeah, I, I check it out. I haven't heard of it. I actually just watched Mary Queen of Scots yesterday, believe it or not. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, I haven't I- seen that. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I, I mean, it's very ridiculous. If you're looking for <laughs> for historical accuracies, it's pretty how it's pretty much a howler. But I didn't care about that. Uh, and uh, I thought that it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. Uh, but um, uh, yeah. So and it does have really great makeup and hair. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> I think. All right. Um, I I think Vice, probably Vice is gonna yeah. win it. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so costume design, uh, we have the uh, Ballad of Buster Scruggs, 
Black Panther, The Favorite, Mary Poppins Returns, and Mary Queen of Scots. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so Sandy Powell is just knocking it out of the park. Nominated twice. twice. A, a pretty good list, I think, um, yeah. of nominees. Um, my favorite nomination, I think, of the whole day is Ruth Carter for Black Panther. I really yeah. do think those costumes are incredible and so iconic. They're already like, you know, how many Black Panther characters did we see on Halloween? And um, it's just like yeah. instantly, I don't know. I just think it's one of those things that it's undeniable to me that those costumes are a part of the culture now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I I think they are incredible. Even just down to, uh, I don't know where the line between costume and makeup is, but even the um, uh, the dots on their skin, um, even all of that, the way that was all done to create an overall aesthetic, like it, and it was very very well done. And uh, um, yeah, but the the costumes in Mary Queen of Scots are really amazing. Uh, if they're going to go the uh, um, the period piece route, uh, they're really good. Yeah. But I, I I think Black Panther will probably win, and then just I hope so. Although I think yeah, I could I could see them easily going for the favorite, um, you mm-hmm. know, or Mary yeah. Poppins because there's all those are also very showy costumes with the watercolor, which is really cool. The, the costumes that look hand drawn, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so last category, we're almost done. So visual effects, we have Avengers mm-hmm. Infinity War, Christopher Robin, First Man, Ready Player One, and Solo a Star Wars Story. And those are all pretty good visual effects, so I don't have a problem. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah, 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 yeah. They're good visual effects. Um, Christopher Robin, a little bit of a surprise, in my opinion, and I think very well deserved. I think the animation in, in the movie is really good. I love Winnie the Pooh in that movie. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I I liked the way that those uh, those characters looked and the way they interacted was very seamless. Mm-hmm. And it would have been nice to have seen Paddington too. Yes, I but, agree. Oh well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, nothing, no, nothing for Paddington two at all. Yeah, well, you you take the bears that you get. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> that's true that's true so there we go that's the oscars uh it's gonna be an interesting uh you you're gonna want to fill out your ballots <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, i don't know it's gonna be an interesting one it's it's definitely i feel like a little bit unpredictable which will be make it probably a little more fun and we'll see how how do you feel about no host uh we'll see how it goes yeah um I guess the no host I'm, is better than bad hosts. So. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it because they did that for the Tony Awards for a long, for like three or four years. They did no host, and mm-hmm. they just had various you know presenters come in and out. And I <laughs> really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, maybe it'll save us some time. Yeah, yeah. So that people are so often complaining about. So. It's so long. So, all right, good. Well, we did it. We got through it all. And so let us know if you're listening, what you think of these different nominations, what were your surprises and disappointments, uh, put in the comment section or let us know on Twitter. Uh, we can talk about it. That would be really fun. And, yeah. uh, thanks for, uh, spending, uh, time and, uh, talking about these nominations with me. I really appreciate of it. Of course. I couldn't think of a better way to <laughs> dissect this nomination. Yeah. It was really fun. And uh, so where can people find you online? Um, they can find me, first of all, on Twitter at Coco Hits New York. You can also find me on my blog, which is CocoHitsNY.wordpress.com. And you can also see my writing every, at least once a month over at AlternateEnding.com. Yeah. Um, I just uh, published a piece it's a personality test based on which is your favorite animation studio and it will tell you what oh. kind of person you are. So you guys should check it out. Oh, that sounds really fun. I'll have to check that out. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media and on iTunes and on YouTube. Uh, and you can find me on Ron Tomatoes, which is pretty crazy. He's still sinking in. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. I'll have that in the description. Uh, so check that out. And uh, thanks again. And we will uh, we'll have to talk about the uh, the winners once it's uh, once this ceremony happens. 